I'm knife. Thank God. Fuck. That was literally over an hour of like editing and trying to make this camera work and evidently I'm not allowed to go up live on my phone so I had to get my camera and then the camera that's on my laptop is garbage so here we are here we are um and I have a lot to say and I actually have a at least 12 point plan of what I want to say before I get off and I feel like um, maybe I don't have anything else to say, uh, doubtful, but the point is I want to make sure that what I have to say has been said. Um, I want to make sure that all the lessons that I've learned throughout my life have at least been said and passed on, even through a virtual means. Um, because I feel like I've, I've, I've learned a lot and um, I've made a lot of mistakes, a lot, and I'm not perfect. And I, I will never be perfect, but I do feel like I have a lot. To give, and if hypothetically um, I'm not allowed to give it in person, I feel like um, at least I have one thing that gives what I want to give people, if that makes any sense. Okay, so um, a big thing for me has always been about life. Um, and by that, I don't mean like the general term. I literally mean human life. I feel like we were put on this earth for a reason. Um, there were a lot of things that um, led up to our creation and to where we are right now. Um, and anthropology uh, taught me a lot. And I loved it. It actually was one of my favorite subjects just because it made me understand people now because the ethics and virtues and the things that we really did back then are still instilled in us now. You know, we have that need to survive and we will always because we had to struggle. We back 65 million years ago, whenever homo sapiens were actually, um, if you want to clarify when we had the distinction of homo sapiens, I mean, when we actually had the power in our brains, in our, in our person to be who we are, we survived only because we banded together, literally. Um, the Neanderthals who were on our, our same level, they were actually living at the same time that, that we did. They didn't have that. Um, they were bigger, they were bigger and stronger and they didn't survive because for me, what I think is because they didn't learn. They didn't learn that banding together and that camaraderie that you have with other people is more important than how big and how strong and how good you look because they didn't survive <laughs> because what did survive is love and caring and family and camaraderie and building your own tribe because that's what it's about. It's not about separation. It's not about who's more powerful or who is stronger or who is even smarter. It's about who can band together and work together to a common 
fucking goal. And I think everybody's goal is happiness. And I think, I think we've lost that present times because we have retracted back to tribalism and tribalism is in our nature. It is. It's part of human nature to see somebody that's different from you and think that that's a danger because that was the case. It literally was the case. You see somebody different than you that had different markings on their face or didn't look the shade that you do or have the same hair color as you or anything like that. And they were literally a danger because they were part of a different tribe that you are not a part of and they wanted to kill you. But we have grown past that. And I think a lot of people don't get it. Like the physical differences that we use, that we have that are innate in our characteristics does not make us enemies anymore. They're not at all. Because that is the past. We are not hunters and gatherers anymore. We are not out there hunting for our food. We are going to fucking Kroger and Walmart and Target, and we are outsourcing everything that we have. But for some reason, people are being small-minded and thinking that these characteristics are still defining who they are and defining who each other are. And until we get that, until we get that that is not who we are anymore, we'll never get past it. We'll never get past it. I have tried my fucking hardest to get people to understand. And I sadly have given up. And I, that's, that's, that's my fault. And I'm not going to say that is who I want to be, but it's hard. It's hard fighting for other people when the people that you're fighting for don't even want to accept you. And I get that. I get that. I get it. I get it. I get it. I look different. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm not trying to be a victim because I'm not. There are a lot of things that were afforded to me that, that I acknowledge. And I do look like people that have hurt and objectified people. But I haven't. That's not who I am. But I recognize that that's who I am. That's 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 my culture, and I've tried my best to do better. And um, sometimes, sometimes the hurt is so bad. Sometimes the injustice is so disgusting and hurtful and harmful and deep in your soul where you go out every day and you don't feel worthy. And you don't feel as good as. And you want to take it out on somebody And I get it. I, I, I will never get it racially. I won't because I've been white my entire life. I mean, it's not like I just woke up and chose to be white. I am white as fuck. But I do remember the days in which I didn't recognize that I was gay. And I remember hurting people. I remember calling people out. I remember calling people homos. I remember saying that they were faggots. I thought 
that was what we were supposed to do. <laughs> um, and that sucks. That's something that I've had to hurt wear on my heart and I've tried my best to apologize to those that I hurt and the ones that I did I apologized to and they became my friends later but it's always in my heart because I don't think that's anybody's I don't think anybody deserves that at all I don't think anybody deserves to be hated on for who they are so Going back to my main point is that humans are tribalistic. That's just in our nature. We see differences as danger because that protected us before. But that's not who we are anymore. It's not who we are anymore. We have evolved. We don't have to attack each other. We can accept each other for our differences and help each other be better. That's who we can be. It's in our nature, actually, as well. So, in that, I'm just trying to say that it's okay to accept that's your nature, but it's also better to accept that's your nature and to grow past it, to know better, that know that hating somebody off of a characteristic that they have nothing to do with, that they did not choose for themselves, is being better is growing. Yes, God made us in his own image and God made us who we are and God made us exactly what you see. But the same could be said for anybody else. You are not special. I'm not trying to say you're not special as in like you're not unique or you're not valid. I'm saying God made all of us exactly how we are. And part of, part of that is accepting that God made everybody else exactly who they are. <gasps> Mind-blowing, right? So how can you hate somebody? that literally God made that way. Unless you don't think, unless you don't think um, God, it, unless you think God makes mistakes. If you think God is a flawed person, if you think God does things to spite or make everything difficult for other people, then you have to accept that other people were made differently on purpose. I'm one of those. You know, I'm, I'm, I am, I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. I bought it a long time. And it caused me a lot of turmoil. And there was a time in my life where I prayed that I could be anything else but gay. And the point is, we are who we are. We can't control it. Just making sure I'm actually still in frame because I've been talking a lot and I just didn't. Anyways, so for the Christians out there, I want them to know that God made everybody everybody you either have to believe that they made nobody or they made everybody there's no ands or buts when it comes to god 
if you believe in God and his plan, you have to know that he planned everybody. So if you think and you believe that he made everybody, then why would you think that he planned for these other people to be ungodlike, to be not worthy of his love? Does that make any sense to you? They didn't just come out of fucking the ground. They didn't just. The devil's not out here making people. That's not what the devil does. God gave us love. God gave us truth and honesty and life and goodness. God didn't give us fucking hate or judgment. He didn't do that. We did. And maybe if you believe it's the devil, if you want to blame somebody, maybe the devil. But for me, for me, I don't blame people for my things that I done wrong. I believe that my faults are my own and I can't blame anybody else. And owning up to them, I think, is what God wants us to do. And I feel like God, more than anything, wants us to be honest and good and help each other. I don't think God made life easy on purpose. I feel like God <laughs> knew that nothing he could create, create in giving us free will is going to be easy because humans aren't perfect. We're not. But I do think he gave us all the qualities in the characteristics that we could to survive. So going back to my original point stemmed in anthropology is that human beings, uh, homo sapiens, homo sapiens, homo sapiens, survived because we banded together. 